Our last demonstration will show the use of an F580C as a network services proxy between VXLAN or GRE tenant network virtualization. Here, once again, the F5 will appropriately graft in to multiple uh, VXLAN or GRE networks and with the compute nodes, and it will provide the LBAS VIP services to other networks or other tunnels. Why would you do this? Well, how about inner VM high availability or load balancing between your VMs or operational agility of being able to turn down specific VMs instead of uh, downing a complete service. Here once again Neutron is being used to manage the L2 tunnels and the L3 subnets and through the F5 LBAS plugin the ADC is appropriately connecting to any L2 or L3 network it needs to. All right, welcome to our fourth and final demo. If you come over here to the topology graph down on the bottom right, uh, this time we're going to create a VIP. We're going to create this VIP on a tenant overlay tunnel, and we're going to target a pool on a different tenant overlay tunnel. Now, why would you do this? Uh, so that you can provide uh, overlay network to overlay network VIP, bounce back, HA, load balancing, an operational model where you can disable or enable things without bringing whole, down whole services. We, there are numerous benefits you can have for this, but the point really is to show that to the big IP, it doesn't matter where we put the networks. Once it's been grafted in and taught by Neutron, uh, where the L2 and L3 networks it needs to create to provide the service, it can do it. Um, you'll notice too that we're not going to do it over here on my provider uh, where I can route to easily. This is going to be an isolated network, so I can't get to it from my browser the way I've been showing other uh, connectivity. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch a little remote desktop and we're going to put it on this tunnel and we're going to connect to the VIP here and make sure it can connect to these guys over here. So again, we're not going to make you type all this into the horizon uh, GUI. We're going to launch our little DevOps client and it's done. Let's see what it did for us. Okay, created this one, pool, tenant, tunnel, tenant, tunnel, and here's the VIP. It says the VIP's on 172.16.0.100, and again, if I try to connect to that, all right, that's a lost cause, because I can't get there from here. This is on an isolated, uh, uh, this is on an isolated tunnel and on an isolated subnet for the tenant. No, sorry. Um, You'll notice my service is updated to four, so it looks like the big IP did something. Let's look at what the big IP did. Oh, there it is. Now you'll notice this virtual service itself is on the right sum debit, 172.16.0.100. It's decorated with the tenant route domain, so it is isolated at layer three. Uh, and let's look at what pool it's talking to. 450, come down here. Here's its pool and it's talking to two pool members on 172.17, which is this tunnel in the subnet over here. Um, but again, we can't get to it from there, so let's launch a remote desktop. We got it right here. I can sit there and launch a web browser. Okay. And this time, let's uh, go to the VIP address, 172. Do you remember what it was? 16.0.100, was that right? It was! And notice it talked through uh, the big IP device service group and got all the way over to this tunnel VLAN over here. Okay, uh, good. So VIP to VIP works, not a problem. Um, what exactly had to go on for some of this? I want to show you a little more detail on the big IP itself, on what it means to graft into the overlay network. So here I have a TMSH um, command line shell because you can see a little more detail with this. We're going to sit there and do a net or we'll do a list net a tunnel and we did GRE and you'll notice it built a GRE profile they used multi-point flooding because that's how we interoperate with um, the network for open vSwitch but you'll notice I have to change directory into my uh, tenants folder because all of the all of its its resources are in its tenants folder. We really are multi-tenant, and I want to show you a few things. Let's do list net fdb, and you will see that we have built in endpoint connectivity to the various nodes in our OpenStack cloud. 
Here's the ones we built for the VIP. More importantly, you'll notice that the ones we built on the two tunnels, this is GRE Tunnel 10,000 and 10,001, the ones we actually built to the pool members themselves, you'll notice that that looks like a uh, real MAC address, and it turns out it is. So if I do list net ARP on my big IP, you'll see that I have full MAC addresses to their appropriate route domain members. Now what does this mean? It means the big IP was smart enough and we actually uh, can use L2 population to do this dynamically but the big IP was smart enough to figure out which compute node owned that member and it proceeded to build the VTEP tunnel to it and proceeded to put in an ARP entry so that we wouldn't have to broadcast across the tunnels to find where that member is. So this truly is grafted in to the SDN the way it's supposed to be. The L2's right, the L3's right, the services sitting on top of it are right. Now let's let's do one more little fun thing before we clean up from our demos. Let's go back to this and um, Let's let's just show that we can do some things in these pools that are that are kind of interesting. Um, let's uh, go to a command line for the Neutron client. So we'll do Neutron, and we'll do pool, or excuse me, lb pool list. There's my pools, and we'll do Neutron lb member list. Can't type, excuse me, Neutron LP <laughs> member list. And there's all my pool members. Now, what happens if I just add something totally rakish to a pool? Well, it depends. Can I find out enough information from Neutron to let me know it's 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 not a managed thing and or it doesn't belong to a tenant? It must be outside the provider. Let's let's do something like that. Let's do ping. We know our friends at Yahoo answer ping, so we'll do that. Let's go get that address. And let's do Neutron uh, LB member create. And what pool do you want to put it in? Let's uh, let's put it in that ten that last one we just did. So let's grab the ID from that pool. And we will do address and we'll steal our friends at Yahoo's public IP address and we'll say protocol port is on 80 and we'll hit add. Okay, it says it's there. Let's go look at our member list and you'll see it goes from, oh, it's active already. And, and did it do it? Yeah, it did. But what does that do on my big IPs? How aware are my big IPs? Well, look at that. Well, one of my tunnels is, is uh, acting a little flaky, but look at this. It added it, but it was smart enough to sit there and say that's not a managed network. So it put it on the provider's network and it actually can connect to it. That's quite interesting, isn't it? So it was smart enough to be able to do that. Now we don't want to let that thing hang around too long. So we'll just uh, member delete. We'll come down to that guy and we'll get rid of him. And member list. And sure enough, he's gone. And let's just make sure my big IP smart enough to figure that out. Oh, it looks like my monitor came back. Hey, if it were, if demo wouldn't be right if it didn't didn't show a little the the reality of life that every once in a while monitors fail. But notice it cleaned up after itself, and immediately it's gone. That it was smart enough to know. So again, the reason we did that demonstration is to show you that the Elbaz plugin can reach into Neutron, understand what networks are supposed to be where they're supposed to be from Neutron's database and be able to build them correctly on the big IP. Now, challenge of all challenge, let's see if I can just get rid of it. I've got four services to find here. What happens if I just walk over here to my load balancing thing and say, you know what guys, whack them. It says, okay, I'm trying to whack them. Oh, they're disappearing. The lights are going out. Notice my service counts are going down. My big IPs, they're deprovisioning. They're going away. And let's uh, go look at OpenStack. I bet you they're gone already. They're gone. Services will go down to zero. Oh, there it went to zero. And on well, my big IPs, update that it's gone. Oh, so is my tenant folder. So are all my VLANs, 
so are all my tunnels. So it cleans up after itself. It knows that those resources don't need to be allocated anymore, so it gets rid of them. So there you have it. The Big IP has an SDN service gateway using OpenStack LBAS as a provisioning mechanism.